What's up guys? Today we're going to check out Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 on 4K UHD. I'm not here to talk about how good or bad the movie is, I'm just going to share some of my thoughts on the video and audio quality. Now let's go over a few tech specs. The movie was shot in 4.5, 4K, and 6K. It's got a 4K DI. It's rated PG-13. Runtime is 163 minutes. Aspect ratio is 239 to 1. And the audio is in Dolby Atmos. Before we take a look at the audio and see how active this mix is, if you don't know what the Atmos viewer is, you can find a link down below in this video's description that tells you all about it, what it does, and where you can get it. You can also find a list of all the gear that I use for these 4K reviews down there as well. Now let's jump over to the Atmos viewer and see how active this Atmos mix is and check out a few of the best scenes. At 13 minutes in, we've got a huge sandstorm with tons of swirling wind effects that'll light up every one of your speakers, along with bullets being shot through the lower channels. Surprisingly, this whole scene was static without any dynamically moving objects, and this is pretty much how it is for about 99% of the movie. The scenes with dynamic movement come in at 38 minutes when Benji is in the baggage room, and in this scene you'll hear the luggage moving in the background throughout the various speakers. At 2 hours 18 minutes in, you'll hear the train as it goes through the tunnel, so you'll get this echoing effect as if you are, you know, in a tunnel. And there's a couple seconds when Tom and Peggy are hanging out in the train where you'll hear some stuff dangling above your head. Other than those few moments, everything remains static. Now it is still a very good sounding mix, so don't let that color your enjoyment. There's a great sounding car chase at an hour in with tons of movement within the lower channels, and even the quieter parts have extension that reaches up top. And there's also a few hefty bass drops that caught me off guard. The sound of the military chopper right after the credits should rumble the ground, and the submarine blowing up felt like it was dipping into the infrasonic realm. Now other than those two moments, and maybe one or two other times, I felt the bass could have been a lot more aggressive. The action scenes felt like they should have hit a lot harder, and this is with a 6 dB boost on my subwoofer over my calibrated settings. Nowadays, it seems like you gotta really have a separate preset with the LFE channel bumped up and running super hot, which does kind of suck. If you're new to the channel and you're in the home theater, or want to keep up with the latest in audio and video gear, tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. And also thanks to all my Patreon and YouTube member subscribers for supporting the channel and making this purchase of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning possible on the Kaleidoscape so I can bring you the home theater movie loving community this 4K review. If you want to join Patreon or the YouTube membership, you can find links down below in this video's description. Video quality wise, this is a very clean, very sharp, detailed transfer. It does look as if they added a very light layer of grain on top of the digitally shot footage to give it a more film-like appearance, so it doesn't have that crisp clinical digital look, although it is very close. I mean, you can count the textures on Luther's hat, and the textures on his jacket just look amazing. That's how much detail is discernible. Tom is also starting to look his age in this one. The CG also looks really good and blends in seamlessly for the most part, and never took me out of the movie. As for the HDR per the Kaleidoscape transfer, it's got a max CLL of 1000 and a max FALL of 453. It's not an eye scorcher, but I found the picture to be plenty bright. It's got a very natural color palette without looking overly saturated. There's also some great shots that borrow from the first movie with its angles and depth of field and its use of colors that ties both movies together nicely. The specular highlights pop from all the JJ lens flares and the sunlit shots, while shadow detail, even for the darkest scenes, kept details from being crushed, which I thought looked fantastic. Overall, this is a winner of a transfer. It's got tons of detail, has a film-like feel with very pleasing HDR. And I should also mention that there are no switching IMAX aspect ratio. It's in 2.39 from start to finish, just like it was at the theaters. That being said, I'm going to go with a 9.2 for video. For audio, it's got a really good sounding mix, but I think the lack of bass really drags down the dynamics. There's good high channel usage, and the dialogue remains constant throughout. I'm going to go with an 8.4 for audio. And if you're wondering, this review is based off of the Cladescape version, which has a download size of 103 gigs. It should give you a very close approximation of what the 4K Blu-ray would look like, and help you to decide if you want to go with a digital copy or with physical media. The Cladescape version is obviously a bit bigger over the 100 gig disc limit, so the Cladescape version should either look a bit better, but not worse than the disc. So what are your thoughts on Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 on 4K? Have you seen it, and where would you place it in the Mission Impossible franchise? Leave a comment down below and let me know. 
Now, if you do want to pick up this movie, I'll leave some links for it down below in this video's description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can follow us on social media. And if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content or great discounts on audio and video gear, then stop by our Patreon page. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again in the next video.